In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how we can make an HTTP request in React Native. And here's a sample app to demonstrate what we will be doing. So as you can see, it gives us a suggestion. It tells us how many people the suggestions for, and it gives us a price. And this is all JSON data that we're using. And every time we click on the press me button, it makes a request to the network to retrieve some more JSON data so we can display it to the user. So it's a very simple app that demonstrates how we can make an HTTP request in React Native. But let's get started immediately with our sample project. And the first thing we'll do inside here is import button from React Native. Then we need to change this to a class. So export default class app, which extends React dot component. And inside here, we need to render the view that we are returning. So copy and paste that inside there. And while this is still like this, we're also going to edit the container and we're going to change align items to flex start. Justify content will stay at the center. And we're going to go ahead and add a margin of 20. Then at the top of the class, we want to go ahead and create a state. So we'll type in state is equal to this list over here. And inside we're going to insert some data. And this is going to be the JSON data we receive from the request. So here we're going to create a small map. One's going to be called activity and that's going to equal loading while our sample data is loading. And you'll see this later, but for now that will take care of the state and we also have to create a function that gets the JSON data. So to do this, we'll type in get JSON data, which is not going to take any parameters. And we have to type in fetch so we can insert a URL of our choice. I'm going to be using an API called board API. So it's going to equal HTTPS double dot double slash www.boardapi.com slash API slash activity. And this is just going to generate the random activities for us. It doesn't require a API key or anything. So it's very simple and very easy to use. And we also have to specify that this is going to be a get method. So method is going to be set to get. And then we're going to go ahead and type in, then we want to insert a response for this function over here, which is going to be the response.json. And right below that, we'll do dot then again to create another promise. So if all of that goes good, we can go ahead and type in response JSON, which is going to lead us to this result. And inside this block, the first thing we want to do is type in console.log and we want to log the response that we got from the server. Then we're gonna go ahead and type in this dot set state and we want to update the state to hold the most recent JSON data. So inside here, we type in data is equal to response JSON. And of course, there's always the chance there's going to be an error. So we have to go ahead and type in dot catch. And we want to log that error. So we'll type in error. And that's going to lead to a function, which is just going to log the error in the console. So, so far, this function will take care of getting the response for the data. And we also have to provide another method so that when the user loads the app, it automatically makes the first request. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and call component did mount, which is a predefined function in React Native that just tells the program that once it loads, you should also do this. So that's going to equal a function. And inside here, we're going to call this dot get JSON data because that's what we want to happen once the app has loaded. And if we go ahead and save and open our terminal, we should have our first JSON request being made because that's what we defined it to do in the component did mount. So if you see this, everything's going good so far and we can continue with finishing the UI to display the information that we are receiving. So let's close the terminal and go inside our render. So the first thing inside the render, that we're going to do is create another view. Now we're going to copy these two and insert it inside this view. And the first text is going to hold a style, which is going to have a margin of 10 and a font size of 16. And as for the text, we'll go ahead and type in suggestion. Now we can go ahead and copy this and paste it right under. And here we're going to give it a font size of 22. Then we have to go ahead and delete this and insert a pair of curly brackets because we want to execute some JavaScript code in here. And it's going to be this.state.data at the index of activity, which is part of the JSON. And something nice for this is to set the selectable 
to true so the user can copy it if they want to. Then go ahead and copy that, paste it under two times. We can actually remove the selectable for the other two and we want to change the other two to 16. Then for this one, we're going to put a pair of quotation marks and say people plus this state data. And inside here, we need to specify participants. So depending on the key you get in your JSON, this is where you want to insert it. Now we're going to do the same thing for the price. So price plus this state data price. Now, if we click on save, we should get our first request loaded. So here we have a suggestion which tells us to go to the library for one person and the price is very cheap. But now let's go ahead and make a button that allows the user to retrieve more of these samples. So inside here, we're going to go ahead and create another view and we want this view to have a style. So the position is going to be set to absolute. It's going to be 20 pixels from the bottom. So 20 and the width is going to be set to 100%. Then we're going to insert a button and it's going to have an on press method which is going to equal this dot get JSON data. And we should specify a title, which will equal press me. And we can actually get away with just making a closing tag here. Now we can go ahead and click on save and you should get this button at the bottom. And every time we click on it, it's going to update the state, which will also update the UI and it's going to make another JSON request. And each time you make the request, of course, if we go ahead and open the terminal, you're going to see it down here. So of course you can also decide to choose the accessibility or the key or the type. You can get all of these and you can retrieve those values. But this is the basic concept of how you can make an HTTP request in React Native. And you can do this with many APIs. It's going to be the same concept. In a future tutorial, I'll show you how we can retrieve from JSON and put it into a recycler view, or here they call them flat lists. And yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. But with that being said, guys, I hope this tutorial helped and I will see you in the next video.